Jesus plus nothing. 100% natural, no additives. Andrew Farley is celebrating your freedom in Christ. Call in and ask your questions at 877-655-6755. That's toll free at 877-655-6755. By a satellite from Texas, it's The Grace Message with Dr. Andrew Farley. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Grace Message. This is Andrew Farley. So glad you're joining us tonight. That number, 877-655-6755. We've got wide open lines, plenty of room for you to get in with your question. Maybe you've got a question about a scripture passage. Uh, Maybe you heard something in church this past weekend. You're still scratching your head, wondering about it. Uh, Hey, let's make it a conversation together right now, 877-655-6755. And if you're a first-time caller tonight, you got to know we love it. We love to hear from our first-time callers. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're a veteran listener, maybe you've called us in the past, uh, but it's been a while. you got something new on your heart tonight. Uh, by all means, join us as well. Again, 877-655-6755. Maybe you've got a personal problem going on in your life right now, in your marriage, with your kids, in your church. Uh, You're looking for that grace message perspective. That's why we're toll-free right now across the United States and Canada. Again, that number, and you can dial in as well if you're on Facebook live streaming with us or you're on our YouTube channel streaming along. You can call in and be a part of tonight's conversation, 877-655-6755. Well, I just want to remind you that uh, we are listener-supported by listeners like you. If you've been uh, checking us out now for a few weeks, a few months, I'm sure many of you uh, a number of years, and you like what you're hearing, you want to help us reach even more people with the love and grace of God found in Jesus Christ, well, we invite you to be a part of our support team. It literally takes two minutes Uh, to partner with us, and it means the world to us. You can go to our website at andrewfarley.org. Again, that's andrewfarley.org. Click on the Donate tab there. It takes a couple of minutes, and, of course, your gift is tax deductible. Uh, Right now we're sitting on some invitations, uh, some East Coast invitations that are pretty exciting, and you can help uh, make all of that happen. Uh, We get new stations that invite us to be on uh, to expand and grow our reach, and we can't do it without you. So when opportunities like this come up, I want to let you know that your gift goes a long, long way. Uh, Maybe you can give $5 a month or $50 a month, whatever, or perhaps a a one-time gift is on your heart, whatever it is, whatever God's doing. Uh, If you're getting excited about the grace message, you want to see other people's lives transformed, we invite you to join our support team. Uh, You can go to andrewfarley.org. Again, that's the donate tab at andrewfarley.org. All right, let's go to Texas for our first call of the evening. We'll talk with Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer, what have you got for us tonight? Hi, Drew. Hey. Um, okay, this is kind of a long story, and I'll try to make it short. <laughs> um, I have grown up having scrupulosity OCD, mm-hmm. which is a spiritual OCD. And so my thoughts are definitely not what I truly believe about God, but they come in and invade my thoughts, Mm -hmm. and I don't quite know what to do with them. Um, For example, I'll say something like, oh, Lord, I just, I receive your forgiveness. I'm so grateful. And then the thought will come in and say, but not if you take your medicine today, or but not if you wear these green shoes something that's totally irrational Mm -hmm. and i don't know do i have to like make these thoughts right with god do Mm -hmm. i you know i just need some help please yes i hear you jennifer well here here's the reality i mean scrupulosity is a a form of ocd uh, and those thoughts could be about anything jennifer it just happens that you grew up in a in an environment a religious environment to perhaps your your home was a Christian home filled with believers. 
Uh, but one way or another, whether it was Catholic or Protestant or just religious, you grew up in this environment and uh, the obsessive compulsive uh, thoughts latched on to the idea of religion. So I just want to encourage you first and foremost that you're not alone in this. I uh, hope you know that there's lots and lots of people that struggle with obsessive thinking and it's no indication of what God thinks about you. Uh, you could have obsessive thoughts about washing your hands, obsessive thoughts about the license plate uh, on the car in front of you, or you could have obsessive thoughts uh, about spiritual matters. And none of those thoughts hitting your brain uh, change the truth. Uh, the truth is you are forgiven. You don't need to be forgiven. And we can take the example you just presented I mean, the truth will set you free, right? You're not being forgiven, Jennifer. It doesn't matter uh, whether you ask a thousand times or never ask. It doesn't matter whether your thoughts are pure while you're thinking about forgiveness or whether your thoughts are all over the place with impurity or whether these uh, obsessive thoughts come in. Uh, it doesn't matter. The finished work of Christ is finished. And, you know, I, I bring up the impure idea because some people in your boat, they're afraid they've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. I'm sure perhaps you've heard about that. If you've run in circles of people who suffer from scrupulosity, they're, they're worried about whether they've lost their salvation at some point, whether they've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, you know, all kinds of thoughts can hit us. And, you know, that's not unusual. Uh, to have obsessive thinking, it, you know, many times, I'm not a medical doctor, but it may be a medical condition. And, you know, if, if that's what's going on, are we going to believe that God is basically saying, Jennifer, you know, I forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness once for all. I've taken away your sins as far as the east is from the west, as long as your brain doesn't suffer from something. Uh, as long as your thought life is not infiltrated by obsessive thinking. And of course, that's not the love of God. That's not the grace of God. Your brain and what goes on in it in terms of brain activity uh, does not change the gospel. Uh, your forgiveness is a done deal. It's over. It's finished. Um, and so I, I like to tell people, invite them, you know, if you're struggling with obsessive thinking, uh, go ahead and obsess about the finished work of Christ. Uh, you've got a very analytical mind, Jennifer. Uh, my guess is you're an extremely intelligent person. You've got an analytical mind. You are great at examining things. Uh, so direct that mind of yours uh, toward the finished work of Christ. Go ahead and obsess about the fact that you're forgiven. Uh, maybe you want to analyze every verse that has to do with it being finished and your forgiveness being once for all. Uh, what if you were to obsess about your righteousness? Uh, go ahead and become an expert and, and a, a person that is obsessed with Jesus Christ, a person that is obsessed with the finished work of the cross and the resurrection. I mean, here we are getting ready to celebrate Resurrection Day. Resurrection means you're righteous. The cross means you're forgiven. Resurrection means you're right with God forever because you're born of the Spirit. Uh, the cross means that you have peace with God forever. Whether you've got some obsessive thinking or not, whether your brain activity is calm or frantic, uh, all of that is just physiology. It would be like uh, believing, you know what, um, I'm good with God as long as I don't get a cut on my finger. I'm good with God as long as I don't uh, struggle with hunger. I'm good with God as long as I don't have uh, the flu. So, you know, when you have a physical ailment, as you do, uh, that's not an obstacle between you and God. And God understands our frailty. He knows that we live in a fallen world. Um, and certainly, uh, you know, when we're struggling with a medical condition, uh, he is sensitive to that and empathetic. Uh, Hebrews tells us we have this uh, sympathetic high priest who understands our weaknesses. So I just want you to know the tender love and grace of God, your Father. Uh, he certainly understands what it is to be human. Uh, he's our designer. And because of the fall, we struggle with all kinds of things, whether they're mental or physical or other. 
relational. Um, and, and none of that, none of that changes what Jesus did in the least. What Jesus did is permanent and perfect. And applied to your situation, you know what that means? You're permanently saved and you're perfectly saved. You're permanently forgiven and you're perfectly forgiven. You are permanently righteous and you are perfectly righteous. So go ahead and obsess about Jesus. He is awesome. And I think that as you direct your analytical mind toward the finished work of Jesus Christ and become an expert in the grace of God, uh, you won't be disappointed because what will happen is uh, these other thoughts will not captivate you as much because you will know the answer to them. So keep seeking that medical treatment, whatever it is. Listen to the advice of doctors, uh, but please, above all, know that you and your performance and your physical condition and the activity of your brain waves, none of that changes what your Jesus has done for you forever. Isn't that awesome, Jennifer? Thanks for your call. Reach out to us again anytime. And I tell you what, I'm going to give you a copy. Make sure you get a copy of the Grace Message. It's our brand new resource. Uh, it'll help you direct your mind uh, toward the truths of the gospel and be encouraged in God's love and grace and forgiveness. So hang on the line there in Texas. We'll, we'll get this out to you right away. It's called The Grace Message. Is the gospel really this good? I hope you have your copy. If you're listening right now, you can get a copy on Amazon.com. All right, well, let's go now uh, to another caller from Texas. We'll talk with Heather. Hey, Heather, what have you got for us tonight? Hi, how are you? Hey, doing great. What's on your mind? Okay, so I was raised in a really legalistic, like, holiness movement, uh -huh. um, religion uh -huh. and so when i got like 18 i ran from it you know and so <clears throat> i'm in my 30s now and i was talking to my sister because i'm trying to develop a relationship with god and so i had been remarried before and i struggle with smoking to be honest and so she was telling me you know because of john 9 31 that I have to basically make a list and, le you know, like, I can't be in a marriage, I can't be smoking, or God will never hear my prayers. So, like, I have to get myself right and do all these things because mm. I told her I don't ever hear God talk to me. And she said that, you know, if I can't hear him in, like, an audible voice, it's because he's left me. I see. Okay. Well, let's talk about this. I mean, this passage in uh, John chapter 9 is what you're referring to. Um, and uh, just want to uh, go through it because I think we always have to get back to context, uh, my friend. That's what it's all about, the context of the Word of God and, and allow Jesus to set us free as we realize uh, what's really going on. So John chapter 9, it says, for, so, uh, for a second time they summoned the man who had been blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. Uh, he then answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You do not want to become his disciples too, do you? They spoke abusively to him and said, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, Well, here is the amazing thing, that you do not know where he is from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if someone is God-fearing and does his will, he listens to him. Since the beginning of time, it has never been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him and said, uh, you were born entirely in sins, and yet you are teaching us, so they put him out. So here, do you see the context of that? I mean, here's a man who's been healed, and they're asking about who did it, and his answer is Jesus did it. 
and then they say, well, how did he do it, and what exactly did he do, and then you know, uh, they're trying to determine whether Jesus is of God or not, and they don't believe he is, and the man is frustrated with them, saying, well, I've already told you how I was healed. Uh, you want me to tell you twice? Uh, what's the deal with this? You're not going to follow him anyway, are you? And they say they're followers of Moses. So, Heather, I would just ask you this. Uh, why is your friend developing a doctrine uh, about you being a sinner, number one, uh, from this passage, and number two, about God not hearing you uh, when this is about people debating the identity of Jesus? Do you hear that? I mean, they're debating the identity of Jesus. That's what's going on here. And as far as you being a sinner, uh, well, the New Testament doesn't call you a sinner. You're born of God. You're born of the Spirit. You're a new creation. You're a child of God. You're a saint who sometimes sins. Uh, but you're not a sinner by nature anymore. If you have called upon the name of the Lord to be saved, then that means your identity has been changed. And we shouldn't be running to any passage that's talking about sinners, referring to them as sinners, and then saying, well, that's me. I'm sorry, but it, that's not you. Uh, the, the good news of the gospel is better than that. Uh, you're not a sinner. You're a saint who sometimes sins. And so uh, this is why Paul tells the Corinthians, that's what some of you were, but you were washed and you were justified and you were sanctified. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I would just say the same thing uh, to you tonight, Heather, that you were in Adam, you were dead in your sins, you were still in the flesh, in Adam, unsaved, unregenerate, but you've been washed, you've been justified, you've been sanctified, and you have this new identity. So I hear you about smoking, but uh, you know, I, I guess I would say the person who's given you a hard time about smoking... Uh, do they eat at the, the fast food restaurant? We got pastors, preachers, leaders, teachers giving people a hard time about smoking. And meanwhile, they're ready to die of uh, cholesterol and a heart attack and uh, a stroke from uh, eating poorly. I mean, these are health issues. So as we're pointing our bony finger at somebody over a health issue, are there some fingers pointed right back at us for a very similar issue? Um, you know, the bottom line is, sure, I would encourage you, don't let anything master you. The Scripture says all things are permissible regarding food and drink. All things are permissible, but not all things are, are profitable. So if you're addicted to something, don't let it master you. Uh, look to Jesus Christ as your counsel in that matter. But, you know, whether it's uh, too much alcohol or too much smoking or too much cholesterol, too much McDonald's fast food, whatever, uh, at the end of the day, we have to say there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. That's real, right? I mean, Paul wasn't lying, and God's not a double talker. So there's nothing, there's no three or four inch piece of paper that you can roll up in, in a cigarette and put it in your mouth to cause enmity between you and God. Romans 5 says you have peace with God. Jesus said the kingdom of God is not about to food and drink. Uh, so I think it's high time we stop this stuff. I'm not talking about you, Heather, but I'm just talking about the Bible Belt religiosity and legalism that we see. There's a lot going on in the Bible Belt that's not in the Bible. There's a lot of stuff being taught in the Bible Belt that is not taught in the Scriptures. And when we realize the difference between that sort of legalism that's out there and the truth that sets us free, then we just start to relax in Christ. We enjoy God more, and that's what he wants. Uh, so, you know, I, I, you had a, a rough marriage when you were young. Uh, what is it, 50, close to 50% of believing marriages end in divorce? I mean, you know, welcome to planet Earth. It's a, it's a rough life. And uh, a lot of people reject us, and there's difficulty and tragedy and stress. Uh, but you, you, you don't get your, your spiritual status from your marital status. You don't get your righteousness 
uh, from whether you're single or married or divorced or, or widowed or remarried. You get your identity from being married to Jesus. You're the bride of Christ. You're one spirit with the Lord. And he says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. So there's your identity. Your identity is not in a cigarette. Your identity is not in a past marriage. Your identity is not in being a sinner. You are a saint, a child of God, holy, righteous, and blameless. And there's no condemnation for you, my friend. So, Heather, I want to put you back on and see. Does that help? Does that make sense? It does help a lot because I'll find myself like repenting obsessively for, Mm. you know, hundreds of times for the same thing. Right. Because when I talk to her, I'm like, you know, I just am not going to be able to get this right. Yeah, I hear you. So you could you could repent and say, please forgive me, please forgive me, please forgive me. You end up uh, doing it under your breath. And next thing you know, you're hyperventilating. Uh, Do you hear this, pastors? Do you hear this, leaders? If you're listening right now and you're an elder, a deacon, a pastor, a leader, a teacher, a Bible study, do you do you hear this? Because I, I want you to know that I've heard it thousands of times over two decades that, uh, for, first, believers are uncertain about their forgiveness, and they're trying to get what they've already got. And so we have fostered this environment of trying to ask and beg and plead and hope and wait for more forgiveness, more cleansing, more purification, and then we wait for that feeling. Has it come yet? Am I clean yet? Am I forgiven yet? Am I cleansed yet? What's it supposed to feel like? And uh, we're waiting for that feeling. And then, get this now, we used to have that cleansed feeling, but we can't drum it up anymore. The emotions aren't there. We feel nothing. We feel dirty and distant. And then we wonder if we're forgiven. So that's the problem. What's the solution? Well, the reality is we can't get any more forgiven. What are we doing asking? What are we doing begging, pleading, hoping, and waiting if Jesus said it is finished? Hebrews 10:14 says, By one offering on the cross, you've been made perfect forever, for all time. So would I ask Jesus to hang on a cross again? No. So then why would I ask him to forgive me again? He already hung on a cross, and he already forgave me past, present, and future. So you don't ever have to ask forgiveness ever again, Heather. Uh, You've been forgiven once for all. Uh, Somebody out there listening is worried now. Oh, my goodness, Heather's going to go out and sin a whole bunch. Well, the reality is Heather's been sinning just fine, and so have you. (laughs) So how about we take a step back and realize what Jesus actually meant. He said, whoever is forgiven much is going to love much. And Peter said that if you're lacking godly qualities, you know, like self-control and godliness, and you're lacking uh, these godly qualities in your, in your life, in your performance, he says, you have forgotten your purification from your sins. In other words, you think you're the sum total of your past. So if I think I'm dirty, I'm going to act dirty. If I think I'm dirty, then I'm going to go out and act like it. So if I believe I'm a dirty, rotten sinner, I'm going to certainly think and act like a dirty, rotten sinner. But if I realize, wait a minute, there was more to the gospel than just heaven. Uh, First, I got forgiven and purified and cleansed of all unrighteousness. And second, I was given the free gift of God's righteousness. I became the righteousness of God. Are you kidding me? You're a slave of righteousness, Heather. Uh, That's what God thinks of you. Uh, He treats you as if you've never sinned a day in your life. So you need to recognize more grace, not to consider less grace. You need to recognize that you're totally forgiven, not partially forgiven. And I would encourage you to stop asking for what you've already got, and you can begin to thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you took away my sins once for all, that you keep no record of my wrongs, that you have removed them as far as the east is from the west, that you remember them no more. My friend, you couple that total forgiveness with that brand new heart that you've got, and that is the gospel. 
For more information on the broadcast ministry of Dr. Andrew Farley, please visit andrewfarley.org. That's andrewfarley.org. Join us next time as we invite you to celebrate the grace message with Dr. Andrew Farley. This program is sponsored by your generous financial support.